Lord, I come before you, humble as I know how. Give me your thanks and give me your praise, O God. Holy Spirit, I that you word my mouth in the mighty name of Jesus. Touch the people's ears to hear in their heart to receive your word, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you. And Lord, I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, today what I'm going to be talking about today, purification. God want his people to be purified. And this is something we're going to have to put our hands to and we're going to have to do it. He want his people to walk upright. He said, we walk upright, no good thing will be withheld from us. So I'm going to start at 2 Corinthians 7, 1. It says here, first of all, let me say purification. It's removing contaminants from us, meaning removing the things of the world out of us. Staying out of the way of the things of this world, to stop indulging in the things of this world, stop causing the things of the the, the things of this world to 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 um to um uh, sort of like feed our eyesight, like to feed our eyes. We we walk into it. The things that we see, we begin to desire. We have to separate our out. We have to separate ourselves from those things of the world. So it says Second Corinthians seven one says. Therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates our body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. So we have to separate in order to purify ourselves, because this is something we have to do. We have to separate ourselves from the things of this world, for the desiring the things of this world. The promises is the commandments to come out from among them and be separated. That's God's word. That's what he's asking us to do. Come out from among them and separate ourselves. That's how we're going to begin to purify ourselves. It's separating ourselves from the things of this world. It says here, 2 Corinthians 6, 17 says, it's coupled with a promise. I will receive you. I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters. If we separate ourselves from the worldly thinking and acting, we are promised a closer relationship with God. And that's what he asking for. And for us to purify ourselves, it's going to cause us to walk one with Christ. It's going to cause us to hear him better. It's going to cause us to see what he wants us to see better. It's going to cause us to walk upright. So it says here, we have to separate ourselves from the worldly thinking. We have to put on the mind of Christ so we could think the way he think. So we can have his wisdom in the mighty name of Jesus. So it say, separate ourselves from the worldly thinking and acting. We can't act like the world. And that's another thing the Lord showed me. But I'm going to do it on the video. But he showed me the difference. It's, it's really no difference between um, people performing on stage and people in ministry performing on stage, performing in the pulpit. He's saying it's no, he showed me it's no difference. What's the difference? So what we have to do, and we can't act like the world. We cannot bring the world into the pulpit. And the only way we cannot do that is by purifying ourselves. Because that's what God is asking for us. He's asking for us to purify ourselves. To separate ourselves from the world. The thinking of the world. The way the world acts. All these cliches. We cannot bring them into the pulpit. We cannot bring them into our spiritually bod spiritual bodies. We have to separate ourselves. Mark 17, Mark, I'm sorry, Mark um, 7, 15 says, nothing outside 
a person can defile them by going in them. So nothing that goes in you can defile you. It says Mark 7, 20 to 23 says, what comes out of a person is what defiles them. For it is, for it is from within and what's coming out. Out of a person's heart that evil thoughts come, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, agri agri um, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and defile a person. But if we watch what goes in us, we won't have to worry about that coming out of us. So we have to continue to ask the Lord daily. We have to ask him to create a, creating us a clean heart, renewing us a right spirit. So we ask him that daily, what he's going to do is keep us cleansed from those things of the world. We'll be able to separate ourselves from the things of the world. And that's Psalms 51.10. It says, create in me a clean heart, a pure heart, O God, and renew a right, a righteous spirit, a steadfast spirit within me. And that's what we have to ask him for. Because he's calling for us to be, to be purified. He's calling for us to, to um, the purification. He's calling for us to separate ourselves, to come from amongst them, them the people, the things of the world. We can no longer act like the people in the world. We can't just pick up the things that sound cute that the world is saying, and then we begin to say those things. Those that we take them in, and those things gonna come out of us. It's not what goes in us, it's what comes out of us. But if the wrong thing's going inside of us, the wrong is gonna get into our heart, and the wrong things are gonna begin to come out of us. We're going to begin to profess those things that the world is professing. We're going to begin to profess them out of our mouth because it's going to be in our heart. Because what comes in our heart, what is in our heart, is going to come out in the mighty name of Jesus. So the last thing is Daniel. Daniel um, 12, 10 say, many will be purified, made spotless and refined, but the wicked, will continue to be wicked. None of the wicked will understand, but those who are wise will understand. Those that are in Christ, they're going to understand that God is calling for us to come from amongst them. God is calling us to be purified, to walk in holiness. He's calling for us to do that. So I come on to give this word what God gave me this morning in prayer. He's calling for us to be purified. Purification in the mighty name of Jesus. To get all those toxins out of us. The things of the world out of us. The things that don't belong. We have to separate ourselves. And it's not going to be easy, but that's what he's calling for in this season. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, Lord, I come before you humble. And, Lord, I thank you and I praise you, O oh God. I thank you, O oh God, for the people that will hear this word, O oh God. And that would do just what you're asking, O oh God. For us to separate ourselves, O oh God, from the things of this world, O oh God. For us to come from amongst them people, O oh God. The things in the people of this world, O oh God. You want us to be separated, O oh God. Because you want to use us for your use and your glory, O oh God. Lord, you're asking that we walk in holiness, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, O oh God. And the only way we can do that, O oh God. If we begin to sanctify ourselves, O oh God. Renewing our minds, oh God. Disconnect, oh God, from acting like the world. Those cliche, cliches of the world, oh God, that sounds cute and funny, oh God. You don't see it as cute and funny, oh God. You see it as being lukewarm Christians, oh God. That we're straddling, oh God, the fence, oh God. 
But Lord God, my prayer today is, oh God, that your people will have a made up mind, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Even the ones that don't know you, oh God, that they will repent of their sins, that they will ask that you come into their heart and be their Lord and Savior, oh God. That you'll lead them and guide them to all truth and all righteousness, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, that they too would that they too would desire holiness, oh God, that they would desire righteousness, oh God, that they would desire to separate themselves from the things of the world, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. So Lord, I thank you for touching your people even right now, oh God, even right now, touching their hearts, oh God, turning their hearts towards you, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, O oh God, and that they will begin to walk, O oh God, separate themselves, O oh God, from the things of this world, O oh God. As I even see, O oh God, that they're doing it, O oh God. I thank you, O oh God, because you're moving, O oh God. And Lord God, I thank you that even, Lord God, as you begin to judge this world, what you're doing now, O oh God, that's going to begin to get some of these people, a lot of these people, to move out of the things of this world, to no longer want the things of this world, to no longer desire the things of this world. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, Lord, I thank you and I praise you, oh God. Lord God, that they begin to walk away from the sin, oh God, the lust, oh God, the darkness, oh God, the evil, oh God, the lying, oh God, the strife, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. And Lord, I thank you and I praise you, oh God. Oh God, I thank you and I praise you and I love you, oh God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Until next time, don't forget, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, repent of your sins, confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and ask him to lead you and guide you to all truth and all righteousness in Jesus' name.